Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. In this video, we'll be doing an introduction to Azure Automation. Before we can talk about the practical concepts, we need to talk about few of the theoretical concepts related to Azure Automation. I'll try to explain these concepts in the next three slides. Let's start with talking about what is actually Azure Automation. Azure Automation is part of the OMS suite offering from Microsoft. This is process automation service in which the underlying infrastructure is provided by Microsoft. We don't control the underlying infrastructure. We don't worry about patching or managing the underlying infrastructure. You just inform Azure Automation what you want to automate. The automation is provided out of the box to you as a service. You can simplify cloud as well as on-premise management with this process automation. You can manage and automate all your resources in the cloud as well as in your current on-premise infrastructure. Desired State Configurations or DSC is another offering based on PowerShell DSC technology which is provided as part of Azure Automation. This service can provide you with heterogeneous configuration management. We'll talk a lot more about this technology and delve deep into this technology in a separate video dedicated specifically to this topic. Next, let's take a look at how automation evolved over the period of time. It all started with PowerShell, which was codenamed Monad. PowerShell grew from version 1.0 to uh, current version, which is 5.1. This is part of Windows Management Framework 5.1. Next comes System Center Orchestrator, which was a tool called Opalis, acquired by Microsoft and worked upon significantly. Latest version of this tool being System Center Orchestrator 2016. Two big shortcomings with this tool were, one, that it was still a 32-bit application and did not support 64-bit architecture. Second, it only supported PowerShell 2.0 natively, and to work with latest version of PowerShell, you had to perform some tweaks. To overcome these shortcomings, Microsoft introduced System Service Management Automation, that is SMA. After SMA came Azure Automation as cloud started picking up. Azure Automation also enhanced over a period of time, now includes much more features than when it was first introduced. Next, let's take a look at how the path to your first runbook looks like. Runbook is the smallest unit in Azure Automation which provides the actual automation. A runbook could be a PowerShell script or a PowerShell workflow. So you embark on this journey as a young paravan. The very first milestone that you need to cross is an automation account. You need to create an Azure Automation account, which acts like a container or a logical grouping of all the runbooks that you will have under one uh, container. This Azure Automation account will belong to a particular resource group and will also belong to a particular region. The next milestone that you see is whether you want a hybrid worker in Azure Automation or not. Hybrid Worker enables you to run your automation not just in Azure against Azure infrastructure, but also in a different Azure subscription than the one in which you have created your automation account, also in a different AWS account or on-premise by installing the Hybrid Worker on an on-premise virtual machine. The next milestone that you need to cross is assets creation. There are six types of assets in Azure Automation, namely schedules, modules, certificates, connections, variables, and credentials. After you have all the assets in place in the Azure Automation account, the final milestone is creation of the actual runbook. You have three options, namely PowerShell workflow, creating a PowerShell script-based runbook, or a graphical runbook, which is again of two kinds one based on PowerShell workflow, another based on PowerShell script itself. Once you have mastered all these concepts, the young Padawan who embarked on the journey becomes a Jedi. Now that we have gone through all these theoretical concepts, in the upcoming videos, we'll be taking a look at each of these concepts in a practical scenarios. That's all for this video. Thanks for tuning in.